possibly four. So we'll say what? So beyond sixty-five, the then president Dr. Kwame Nkrumah introduced social security. It was then under state insurance. State Insurance Corporation was and so is a government state insurance company. And when the government decided that there should be a pension to cover or uh, to cover all, they asked SIC, State Insurance SIC for short, to do that job in addition to insurance activities. But you, it went on, but by 1973, I guess, 1972, right. 72, Senate came out, out of SIC. with covering everybody in addition to the CAP 30 people. The CAP 30 guys were on government, they were paid out of tax. But those who started from 72 consolidated, yes, consolidated fund. fund. For those who started in 1972, it was contributory. That is 5%. 5% of your gross uh, basic. basic, sorry, and then 5% of employees' basic salary, basic salary, and then 12.5%, and then 12.5% of employers, yeah. employers' contribution. Yes, indeed. Okay, okay. Thank you total of seven, making a total of 17.5% of the yeah. employees' basic salary. Yeah. Of the employees' basic salary.
Does immigration translate? Immigration? Yeah. Uh -huh. How does it translate in terms of your benefit system, the previous system? Previously? Yeah. People, you know, previously we had uh, immigrants, but the Nigerians, in the South region, in the foreigners, some uh, diplomatic staff in country, country, the non, non diplomats. Uh, staff in the missions. So whenever they finish their term of uh, service in the mission, they were going for another group. They paid off their immigration benefit. Oh, that's what they did. Okay. And then we had reciprocal arrangement with other pension institutions, institutions for those who wanted to take their contribution and continue wherever they find themselves. We did that. Oh, that's great. Well. That's great. Uh -huh. So that's. Uh -huh. Okay, so that had in gratuity sure. and other things. Sure. Great. So, with the. So that's with the uh, monthly pension. And monthly pension, you are obliged between 55 and 59 to decide to go on voluntary. But then, the actual will tell you that. Sure that people who are 
are strong and can work do not actually uh, get the MIP benefits when they are not supposed to. Thank you. Correct. Okay. Thank you. So that's by way of the benefits. Now the question is, how do we mobilize funds? How do we manage the contributions that we take from uh, the contributors? Question is, how does the employer view the, the, the increase? Because it seems an enormous uh, level of contribution. That's right. 13.5 percent, 13 percent. Uh, That's right. It's it's heavy on them actually, and a lot of employers uh, find it difficult to understand. But we also understand all over the world, it is also difficult contributing towards the social security of employees. The default do, but we also have measures by which we ensure that these contributions are recovered. Yeah. But then this information came through an act of parliament and the whole issue started somewhere in 2003. Uh -huh. So it's understood by all Ghanaians and employees that um, it's their contribution so, thank you, thank you, Aris. So, this amount, is this by 14 from the assumption, the contribution should be estimated. If you default, we will send you a reminder. The next time, we will send you a demand letter. The next time, we will call you to agree on a payment plan. The next time, you find yourself in. And with the social security matter, it is not a civil case, it's a criminal case. So we have on several occasions put my we even the, 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 the latest one that we did was we put a presidential candidate in the last election. It was a presidential
second did, but he was not paying for his employee. He was jailed. So that's how serious yeah. uh, we view the 14 employers and recalcitrant employers. So now, having finished with how to collect, I think I should have been giving you Then we have GM, what again? Legal Council. GM Legal Council. One, two, three, four, five, six. I didn't know. Yeah. Uh, health. No, no, this is the CEO. Auditor, chief internal auditor. And then corporate affairs. Corporate affairs, they are not part of the. Okay. They, they are not part, they are chief not an IGA. So corporate affairs, they, are, they directly answer to the okay. general. Then corporate affairs, eh? That's right. Corporate affairs. So. Start with GM Finance. Okay, let's just go up on it. Okay, that's a general and chief attorney of the time, the corporate affairs. The corporate affairs, they deal with matters concerning the image of the trust, of the scheme in general, and everything concerning me. And then um, they normally inform the public about the programs we are doing, the new programs we are embarking on. And they continue to speak on the behalf of SNITs. Whenever um, we are about to uh, maybe do enrollment, especially with the OBS, they went to CTFM to inform the whole country about what projects we're embarking on. And they also deal with protocol issues. They deal with protocol issues. They also deal with publicity. Publicity, so they write a lot. Student loan is also under finance. Only right. have got a student loan as well. Yeah, that's yeah, marvelous. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we used to give loans to students, and we are no longer handling it. Now, what we are doing is that um, we are recovering the loan, so we have a department for that, and then they handle that. They take the money that students have actually taken. They've enjoyed throughout their educational period. I actually enjoyed the loan and I've actually paid. It benefited me a lot. That's 
screen. So because we had so much money stuck in the government was taking advantage of the scheme and the trust. So student loan was given to SNE to manage. Okay. So till some three years ago, we had for more than two decades been giving student loan to students and we have a way of recovering whatever we give. You come with about three guarantors who are members of the social security scheme do so that just in case you default and we don't have any choice in collecting our money, the day the, per the person comes to collect his pension, we take it. Yeah, we give it <laughs> that's great. Yeah, but <laughs> just to add to that, we are sure that that's the member who would actually be the guarantor for the student should have contributed for at least five years. Yeah. That's right. That's 60 months of contributions. That's correct. Thank you. So, recovery is guaranteed. Couldn't want a better so collateral. Government, government has <laughs> finally, government has even taken yeah. over. That's good. So, what we are doing now, we are no longer giving loans, but we are doing recovery. Yeah. Uh, okay. Recently, we said that uh, we will not even wait for them. After some time, we just entered the guarantee's accounts and so that's what we're doing. That's correct. Then we have the financial accountant. He paid you your consultancy fee. Ah, oh, great. <laughs> a financial accountant uh, deals with uh, statutory payments in the organization. Uh, he takes care of everything, budgeting from salary to payment of pensions. He he sends the data. The treasury, and the treasury, our company treasury will release the funds. Treasury is also under GM Finance. They collect the monies that we pay immediately for quick investment, short term, quick, 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 like between one month and ninety days, and some percentage is gone to our long term projects and uh, under. Investments, so that's what the treasury does. That's correct. They go there and release money by swift or by. They are not many. They have already five in the office. We don't have checkbooks. We really have our machines to swift fast money transfer. That's what they do there. Correct. But they also make sure that the short term investment that we do are in the low risk areas. The type of investment, quick one that will make more money. And it's, it's worth it because we make a lot of money through treasury. Aside our long, long term and medium term investments. Then we come to manage, uh, operational accountant. Operational accountant makes sure that all the contributions collected are uh, backed with data. Because data is very important in social security. We make sure that we don't. Uh, the wrong code even. Can you help me there? Yeah, um, with the issue of the wrong code in somewhere in 2010 from January when we started a new pension scheme under the Act 766. Um, members of the scheme who were 55 years and above were given the option to, to choose whether they wanted to belong to the old pension scheme run under the uh, uh, law 247 or the new pension scheme under Act 766 actually. So these are the two uh, schemes that we have. So the operations accountant ensure that each member, each member's contribution actually is credited to him or her and that he actually belongs to the, the, the scheme that he has actually chosen to belong to. Okay. Thank you. Excellent. Yeah. So, so that, that then the student loan department, like I said, they used to give those, they also have uh, general manager finance and management account also. Uh, it's, that's their work around uh, trust, management properties, like physical assets, and anything that's got to provision of physical assets. So, 
you want to add something to that? Yeah, I think it's okay. So, then we come to GM operations. GM ops is a heartbeat <laughs> of Smith. He has all the area managers, area offices, branch offices, branch operations. Where again has he? Where again has he got operations? Area yeah. and branch. Yeah. We have eight area offices. Okay, I'm not even interested in the, the number. But right. area and branch offices. Area and branch offices. Yeah. Then he's also got the yeah. 54 operations coordinators so office. Coordinators office. office. Oh, that's right. Coordinators office. Then the data management offices. Data. General manager operations, he makes sure that employers go by the law, statutory. He makes sure that the statutory obligation that is placed upon employers are duly satisfied or are, are duly operationalized. He makes sure that they do what the laws require them to do by way of making sure that employees and employers' data are accurate. Employees and employers' contribution are the right amount, not <clears throat> under-declaring or over-declaring. And he makes sure that the monies are collected on time and paid. He makes sure that the area and the branch offices <clears throat> and all these offices under him are well catered for, are well equipped to prosecute their, his agenda. So he's a very important person as far as our operations are concerned. Great. I think we add one more um, office under the chain is the yeah. compliance and prosecution. Compliance and prosecution. Oh, great. It's another strong department. Yes. <laughs> they deal with the um, prosecution aspect and compliance, they ensure, for instance, um, one of the duties is that the manager could go through the daily mail, the daily graphic. Perhaps um, an office is closing down and they owe SNIT a lot of money and they've not paid quickly. He would inform the prosecution's manager to take action and ensure that all monies owed to SNIT are recouped before that establishment closes down. Thank you. Great. And then the GM Ops also. By law, is the one who can issue you with a clearance certificate. If you're a contractor, if you're a consultant, and you want to go in for serious consultant's business, you have to come to us for a clearance certificate. Then we'll find out whether you do pay your social contributions, whether you are not in default, and it will be issued to you. So it's also another way of making sure that people uh, comply with the law. That's correct. Um, I will ask you, I want to keep something. Um, something. Under the operations again, we have eight area offices scattered in the whole of Ghana so that um, we ensure that all members are covered, those in the working class, we ensure that they are registered duly, and then their establishments are also registered when they then we also have 50 branch offices, 50 branch offices, and we are still on, uh, expanding. Because whenever we see there's a vibrant area where we can put our office, we we'll do that. Then we also have what we call day offices. Now the day office concept is just like yesterday when we went to Pennsylvania. Uh, when we see there is a shopping center or a large area where people shop in Ghana. And in some of our regions and districts, we have we have days that people go to shop. It's not the whole week, seven days in a week, but maybe two days within the week, people go to shop. So on those days, if we realize that we don't have a branch that is close to the district, we find a place there and then we find a desk and we make sure that there is a place where we can serve members of the scheme or people who want to actually join the scheme so we call it day office
So they work for just a day. Then they, I mean, um, employees of SNITS work for just that day. Then they move, move back into their offices and continue with their work. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Very good. Highly facilitating. Yeah. So give